What's up there everyone, welcome here to another video on my YouTube channel. Um, I want to talk here in this video about, I want to provide some um, tips for beginning entrepreneurs from an entrepreneur. Uh, so, me. I just want to share the, the things that I've come to learn so far over the years of this incredible journey that I've had already so far of being an entrepreneur. It's an incredible one, but it's a very challenging one. And uh, for anyone who is walking on this path or thinking of, of being or becoming an entrepreneur, I hope here in this video I can provide you with some tips um, that I've learned that I hopefully can help you with. Just so you note that the same that helped me might not help you. But that's in the thing in the end the thing. If you read a book, a self-help book, the whole 100% will not probably apply for you, but you gotta take out the words and the, fee the, the tips that do apply for you and that do have meaning to you. So the same here within this video. Uh, the whole everything here that I'm, all the tips that I'm gonna share, not all of them are probably um, gonna apply or be helpful for you, but there might be and hopefully will be some that will. Uh, and it's about taking those and using them in your life. So with that, let's start and uh, let me go to the first tip that I have here. If you want to decide to do this thing, whatever that thing is that you want to do, uh, and to become an entrepreneur, and to start the thing that you want to start, I would say personally to go 100% for it. Because uh, a lot of of times, and it was in the beginning for me, that I wasn't 100% committed. And if you're not 100% committed, you're not going all the way for it, and the chances of you in the end succeeding with what you wanna do is gonna be less likely because you're not 100% committed for it. And I wanna share here a little personal story, uh, cause everyone has their own moments where they are going 100% for it. Everyone has a little different story. Uh, and everyone has a different reason why they're not going 100% for it. Uh, and so it's for you important to, if that's the case, right? If you're not going 100% for it, it's important to note why you're not going 100% for it. What is holding you back? And let me share a little, well, a personal or my reason why. When I was 21, I came back from a three year travel around the world. Basically, I was not sure what I wanted to do. I was more trying to find a job in society that would fit me. And one of those things was actually going to the army. The army had like, from all the jobs, a lot of boxes that I could check off that fitted me. I enrolled uh, for the tests, went through everything. The mental tests, perfect. The physical tests, easy, perfect. The medical tests, all perfect, everything perfect. Except one thing that didn't allow me uh, was my heart. So I have a heart condition, which they discovered when I was, I uh, think like 10 years old. Uh, and ever since then, I had to go every year to the hospital, uh, every year to do a, a checkup to see if everything is stable still. I'm not a heart doctor, so it's, a little bit difficult to ex completely explain, uh, but very simplistically put, what my heart problem is, is that you have a normal heartbeat, right? It's like an up and a rest moment, an up and rest moment. My heart is basically, it, it, it's an up and then there's like more peaks up, up, more peaks up. Back then when they discovered it, some years after they wanted to do a surgery to, to remove it, I think I was 14 and they operated my heart. Uh, the thing is that when I was in a hospital under narcosis, my heartbeats, <laughs> they vanished. So they weren't there anymore. And I needed them to track down where it was coming from to, to burn that away. So what I did was uh, the day after when I woke up, they said like, we couldn't fix it because we couldn't find them. So we are going to do it again, uh, if it's okay for you, the next day. Uh, but differently. So what they did differently was they didn't put me completely to sleep, but just halfly, 
which was not too much fun. Uh, but the same thing happened. So the extra heartbeats, they, they were gone. And I had a normal heart rhythm, which is, I'm not a heart doctor, right? So I have no clue how exactly or what the reason is for that. Um, but so I was, uh, you know, 21, came back, uh, applied for the army, couldn't, because uh, my heart. And uh, I was so committed that I went to my heart doctor and asked him, like, it's been now a whole bunch of years since we did that surgery. Isn't there any new techniques, something new? And he said, like, yep, yeah, there is actually. So went under the blade or under the knife again for a third time. And, uh, you know, so I would be able to, to go to the army. Had another heart surgery, woke up, thought like, all right, it's gone now. And um, same thing, they weren't able, the, the beats, the extra beats were gone. <laughs> now, you know, I don't want to tell you what you should believe in, but I do think that life I do think that life is trying to show us things. And it was exactly on that moment, on that day, when I was in the hospital, when the doctors asked me, can we try it again tomorrow, but in a more aggressive way, in a different, they wanted to do something different. But after the third time of having a heart surgery and having that failed, I was like, maybe my heart is so stubborn that it doesn't want to get rid of this heart problem for a reason. And that reason might be very well for me to do this thing of the IPS project. And it was that day that I completely burnt every bridge of doing anything in society of like army or any other job. And that I went 100% forwards into becoming self-employed. The moral of this whole story is that everyone has a different moment and a different realization. But the thing is, you got to burn your bridges. You got to burn those bridges and commit a hundred percent to what you want to do. And I'm not saying that you can never at some point be, you know, if in the end, after some time, it's not the thing in the end that you wanted to do, it's okay. But to really figure that out, you got to go a hundred percent into it and commit fully to really realize if it's going to work or if it's something that you in the end really wanted to keep doing. Whatever you wanna do, what helped me was to commit. What I can recommend to you is to commit as well. It's sort of in your blood to be an entrepreneur, to do something, uh, to create something and to build something out yourself. Uh, but even though if it's in your blood, you might not have the exact idea of what you wanna create. Or you might have several ideas, which is a common problem actually as well for people. The tip that I actually would give on that is whatever idea you have, and you might have multiple ideas, is to try out all of them. And all right, if you have a hundred, then of course you gotta filter a little bit down, filter a little bit more out and really look, okay, that's something that I would see myself do for multiple years. Forever, that's maybe, okay, I understand that you might not be able to answer that, but at least you should be able to see yourself do it for several years. So list those things down. And what I would recommend in the beginning where you are not 100% sure yet in which direction or what you exactly wanna do is to experiment and try out everything that you possibly want to do, but give them a, a, a good amount of time. So what I would do is, for example, maybe you wanna be a chef or a cook, but you also like woodworking, experiment with that and give it six months, but at least more than one month, you gotta give it a decent amount of time. Six months is even short, but six months, six months and fully committing on building out a career as in cooking, you will get a better feeling of what it exactly feels like. The, th the important thing in life and in figuring things out is by doing. Like, this is such an important thing. You can think about it, and it's gonna help you to some degree, but it's never gonna completely make you realize if you do like something or not. You truly have to walk, you truly have to start doing. It's only when you start walking on the path that a path becomes clearer. So therefore, it's such a vital thing to start walking. Make a, a food block, 
start making YouTube videos, whatever. But you gotta start walking the path to truly get the feeling of it, to truly notice and see if it's the path that's meant for you. And after those six months, take the other six months to start something with woodworking and build your furniture and see and build and try to look at all the possibilities and, and do it already. Build your website where you sell your furnitures or make videos on YouTube, how you make furnitures, whatever you you like to do, right, with furnitures. It's by walking that you also come up with better and more clearer ideas that you will never realize if you just only think about being doing something with cooking or doing something with woodworking. Who knows, maybe you do the cooking for six months, then you do the furnitures, you build your furnitures for six months, try to build that up, and you realize, you know, I like boats, maybe I could combine it. And you totally can. You can open up a place, have your furnitures there as tables and sell them at the same time while people are eating at the furniture that you made, at the table that you made, at the chair that you've made. This is super possible, right? Just combine things that you love. But it's only po like through trying all those things that you like, that you, you can start seeing dots and connections and that you might be able to combine different things that you love into one thing. Write it in your calendar, you know, the day it is today and go all the way into six months, put it in the calendar and those days just focus on one thing that you might possibly want to do something with. And then after those six months are gone, focus on the other thing. And if you have another thing, then focus on that other third thing for six months. But invest some time first into really getting to know yourself better and to really understand what you truly like to do. But it's through doing it and giving it proper amount of time to let it evolve that you can do that. And it might feel like oh, that's some years or some m months of my life that I have to invest. But in the long run, it will play out way better if you can do that. So experiments, if you don't yet know what you want to do with every possible thing that you, that you do like to do. And again, it's by walking, it's by doing that everything becomes more clearer. I think it is super important to do something that you have a passion for or that you have a love for doing and that you truly care about. And the main reason is like it's weekend right now and it is 1, 1.30 a.m. I am the only person working right now in the weekends. If I would not love what I would be doing, and this is by the way a choice, right? I don't have to sit here. If I would not love what I would do, I would not be able to do this, to sit here on a weekend so late. And I mean, I'm an evening person, so it's not like that abnormal for me to sit here. But this is not just this weekend. This is basically every day. Every day I work. And for me, a good day is a day where I can work. If I go on vacations, I work. I mean, I work less of a percentage, I, I, you know, I work, it would be stupid to work there all the time, otherwise I'm there, I could better be staying at home, right? But I just love what I do so much, therefore a good day for me is a day where I can work at least some hours. Like, I, I don't think I would be able to, to put so many hours into the IPS project if I didn't love it as much as I love it. If you don't like what you do and if you just do it for the money alone, for that reason alone, you're not gonna be able to put the same amount of effort into it. That's why I give this tip and that's why I think it's such a big tip to not just in underestimate. If you like what you're doing, you're prob the, the chances that you're gonna earn some decent money with it is very likely as well because you're more likely to put more work onto it than if you would do something that you don't like and that you in maybe the first year you might put a lot of work still into it, but after a time it's gonna be a drag if you do something that you don't like and you will not build it up that much faster or that much better than if it would have been something that you would have loved. I think this is a really important tip, a really important tip to consider as well before you start doing anything to truly find something in your life that you love a lot 
yeah, sometimes life shows you those things. Uh, like I interviewed on the IPS uh, podcast, so the podcast of the IPS project, Martin Ederbitsen. He's a neuroscientist, but also a pancreatic cancer survivor. It was through that experience that he uh, founded My Survival Story, which is a platform where he shares cancer survivors' stories to help inspire uh, people who are finding with cancer. Um, so finding something that you love can be through what life shows you. Uh, but then again, well, I mean, everyone has an interest, everyone has a passion for something. And that's where the previous tip to experiment, uh, experiment with the things that you love to do. And the, the main thing that stops people as well to, to do something with what they love, to create something around that, is often that at the moment itself, it's less obvious to make a living from it. The great and incredible thing is that whatever you want to do, whatever you like to do, there is a way to make money with it and to make a living from it. I would not worry too much about that. And I know I don't know your circumstances and your situation. So you have to, of course, see how your situation is. These are just tips, right? Uh, they're not customized to your situation. People tend to more choose for the, the roads that might earn them faster money. But it's all about the long-term game. And I don't see myself stopping with the IPS project anytime soon. For me, this is something that I will do until the day that I will die. Like, I have no intention to stop with it at all, ever. But if it's something that you started uh, just because of money, you will burn out if the passion and the love is not there. Take this tip into account uh, as it's an important one and play the long game. As life is a marathon, not a sprint, and your career should be played out as a marathon as well. In theory, to build out, you know, whatever you want to create might seem pretty easy or might not seem that difficult. But in reality, there are a thousand more things that you can't foresee that will happen. For me, building the IPS project, it's the idea was there when I was when I started traveling, so when I was 18 to 21, that idea started building up in me. So when I was 21, I went full in into building it out. But it took me another two years because it was first more like a personal blog. Uh, you know, it, I mean, it's been a variety of things. Um, but it took me two more years to truly grab what I wanted to create out of it. What you gotta know is that don't wait. You know, if you can start, start. Maybe you don't wanna do it full time because you still wanna travel or whatever. Then try to do it part time at least, but you gotta start because it's gonna take so much more longer than you think to, to get the amount of customers that you wanted, to get the amount of revenue, um, to make a living from it, to, exactly what happened for me then to exactly know what you are trying to create it can sometimes take a little while too um and a whole variety of other reasons so the sooner you can start the better it's gonna take a lot of work now i got a little bit of something to say on that like the, what you're seeing here right now empty desks it's the weekend it's 1.40 a.m. in the morning, and I'm up uh, still working. It's pretty normal, this. Uh, and I don't mind, right? But I'll get to that. But it's pretty normal that I am working way more than other people. And there's other people here. Most people here don't. You can truly notice the ones who have their own company and the ones who don't. I mean, the ones who don't, because there's a variety of people here who work for another company. So mainly once they're, the hours are done, they're going home, right? Because their work stops. For an entrepreneur, for someone who has their, his own company or her own company, uh, that never ends. There's always another thing that you have to do. Uh, so there's only just a few people who have their own company here. Most of the time it's me and two other guys who are sitting here still up into the evening, but this shouldn't scare you. If 
hard work, if that's something that puts you off. I don't know if being an entrepreneur and building your own thing up is your thing. And th um, uh, this is not meant as anything bad, right? Because everyone is different. Being an entrepreneur is not meant for everyone in the end either. But um, you gotta understand that it's gonna take a lot of work to build something up from nowhere, from out of the ground. It doesn't just happen like that. And that's why I think it's really important to, to get more into the details of what it's like, how the journey looks like of, of, of climbing a mountain as a metaphor. So what helps me a lot and which I find super inspirational uh, to read is biographies. As biographies, uh, you read about the journey that people went through before they became, you know, the, the person that is famous or known. For example, like Walt Disney, amazing biography that shows so extremely well the journey of what it's like to be an entrepreneur, the journey what it's like to build something from out of the ground, from out of nowhere up to something enormous. And um, I would highly recommend if uh, you're going to walk on this path to read more biographies, uh, to understand this journey more. And um, yeah, and, and to maybe also not feel too much alone sometimes in it, as uh, it can be a little bit lonely sometimes, but to understand this journey more instead of the end goals that people reached, as that doesn't matter actually too much. The climb itself is the most fun moment actually, and that's why it's also important to fall in love with the journey, to fall in love with those days that you're working your ass off. And there are gonna be plenty of those days, um, but those days where the struggle is real, those days when it's not easy, you gotta, you gotta enjoy those days. And I know it's not always, it's not easy on those moments maybe, but this is really what differentiates a real entrepreneur, in my opinion, of course, from one that's n not a real one or someone who should do something different. A real one loves this, loves working late, loves to be beaten down, loves the challenge of it all. It fires me up. So I like it. I like to sit here and work my ass off. There is no one who has not worked hard, who is successful. Uh, but so the main thing that you gotta grasp out of this piece here, this tip here, is that it shouldn't put you off. Hard work should not put you off. It, it can definitely be a lonely journey, uh, especially in the beginning. Especially in the beginning when you're building it out. Um, of course, your situation could be different. You could have a co-founder, where you're working together with someone. But in a lot of cases, when you're the founder, uh, you're the one with the vision, you're the person with the vision. And it can be lonely sometimes to be the only person with that vision. And, uh, and yeah, in the beginning for me, building the IPS project out was quite lonely in a lot of ways. I didn't have the podcast yet, so I didn't, I didn't interview people at that time, uh, I didn't, created courses for the IPS Academy, so the academy that we have on the IPS project. That was all being built up in the first sort of years. It was way more lonely back then than it is now, uh, as I'm more in contact with people and I have a team of people with me now working on this, so there's more contact there. But th th the first years were definitely quite lonely for me. So a tip here that I would give is, is something that improved my, just my life, you know, the quality of my life so much was to join a co-working place as like here where I'm sitting now, as I used to always work from coffee places, which was great. I was surrounded with people, but most of the time you don't establish really friendships there as it's more people who come and go. Here I come back and I see the same people. There are sometimes new faces, which is nice, right? But there's more a family feeling, more a community feeling, and that's really important. And yes, everyone works on their own thing, but you help each other, you talk to each other, you do, you know, you go for drinks together, 
And it's nice to come to a place where you know, where you will see the same people and where you can build further on friendships. This has been such a huge improvement to my life to find a good co-working place. And there are, I mean, they're up and rising everywhere. In every city, you can find multiple co-working places. And what I would advise you is to try out a few. Uh, and most of them have like a free trial for a couple of days. So I would try out a, free, a couple of, co-working places and then and then stay at the one or, or, or stay at one for a couple of months and then stay at another one for a couple of months. But you gotta stay at one where you really feel more that you're a part of the community um, and, and one where there is a community. Uh, there are also like remote communities like Wi-Fi Tribe, uh, which is a community of digital nomads who travel and work together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they live one month in Barcelona, for example, one month in Lisbon, one month somewhere in Asia, one month somewhere in South America. And it's a, a community of digital nomads uh, that travel and work together. As an entrepreneur, as someone who potentially could be a lot on him or her own, it's really important that you that you that you still get social contact with people. And uh, work is for me a huge part of my life and I spend a lot of hours working. So in the past, I spent so much time alone, which was not healthy, was not good. I should have done this sooner to join a co-working place. You have to play, pay a little fee, but that fee, you know, it will do so much good to your life that it's all worth it. <laughs> you know, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're going on this path, I don't know your exact situation of what you want to build, but likely it's going to be quite lonely in the beginning. And um, I would recommend you, highly recommend you to join a co-working place. Uh, there's enough, yeah, entrepreneurs who have committed suicide um, for various reasons of stress as well, but loneliness is definitely in there as well. It's definitely in that list. So don't let that hit you. Uh, don't let that get you as you can totally do something about it. Again, by joining a co-working place. Don't trap yourself into your room. Don't let this feeling of loneliness get too serious as it can evolve into quite some, yeah, it, it, it can lead to nothing good. Um, take care of your health. You really have to take care of your health. And this is where it's all a long-term game. So play the long-term game. If you want to build a successful company, then it's also important that you are healthy. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep maintaining what you're building uh, as, yeah, you're not feeling good, uh, which will lessen your work. But besides all that, it's important to take care of yourself. A nice co-working place with good people around you. It will also motivate you. And a lot of times people have different skills here that you can go to and uh, get their opinion or their help. So you become a part of a community, a part of a family, and it's the best feeling ever to, to feel that. So don't underestimate that and take care of your health. Um, yeah. I hope you <laughs> enjoyed this video here. If you liked this video, if you know, some of the tips were helpful, then put a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button as there are more videos like this coming. Uh, but with that, I am, uh, yeah, it's 3 a.m. I'm probably uh, going off to bed soon. <laughs> but all right, hope to see you in another video.